We're going to demonstrate junction shift. We have two 10 by 10 field sizes set with a gap, just a straight gap in between. What we really have here is from here to here, we have a 20 centimeter long field. That's two fields that are matched together, but you have to treat both of these fields as one volume. This field size, this field edge, and this field edge are hard. They cannot move. You have to have the same 20 centimeter volume included here, no matter where your match line is. Let's say you treat 10 by 10 and 10 by 10 for five treatments, and the doctor wants a one centimeter junction shift. What they actually end up having happen is you're going to shrink one field and grow one field, and then that will actually move your junction to a different location. Okay, we, we currently have 10 by 10, right? So we're going to make the superior field 9, and we're going to make the inferior field 11, which still gives us 20 centimeters, which still means this field and this field edge will match. So I'm just going to move, I'm going to, the length will now become 9. Okay. What that's done is we've taken a half a centimeter off of the inferior and a half a centimeter off of the superior. That's not a one centimeter shift yet. That is one centimeter total shrink. What we now have to do is move the field out a half a centimeter. So we have moved this field half a centimeter and then we moved physically the patient half a centimeter until this superior field edge is exactly the same. Now we have a new match line. I made the dots different so we can determine which one's which. So we have to treat the inferior field. That inferior field has to be 11 by 10 or 10 by 11, I should say. We're going to increase that field size to 11. That's what we get. Now we have to move the patient. I'm going to go back to the CR just to determine what it's going to look like. On the CR, we can see we're not quite there, and we're overshooting it right here. So you actually do the same thing. You end up moving the table out. A half a centimeter. This is the hard edge. That's the hard edge. Until now we're matching here and we're essentially matching here. My fat right there. So now we have created a junction shift from here to here. Now where that potential point of overlap and potential hot spot is We've moved to a different place on the person's body, but we're still treating the same volume here to here. You can do this as many times as you want. You can, you can make this field size smaller again and this one bigger again as long as you maintain that hard superior and inferior edge. What you're essentially doing is moving half and half. You saw that we ended up with a half a centimeter's worth of volume change, and then we moved the table a half a centimeter. So, no matter what you do, we can, we can, we can flip-flop these to where this one becomes 11 and this one becomes 9, and that will put us down here. When we move the field size itself, it's only going to put it to right there. We'll have to do field size and table shift in order to maintain the superior, superior and inferior border. That's the more complicated way of doing it. The really easy way to do it will be to actually just... We're going to go longitudinally back to the CR, maintain the CR, and use our dual independent jaw feature to close that one, open that one. And then we do the same thing up here. Either way, the point is you, you're 
inferior edge and your superior edge are hard set. That's the volume that you're treating. So if we're doing this with the cranial spinal axis, think about this way. This is the inferior um, spine field. This is the superior spine field. But we want this overlap to happen in a different place just in case somebody's making a mistake. So we're going to feather that match line out. It's an old term for it is field feathering instead of junction shifting. But we're shifting the junction to a different place on the patient's body while treating the exact same volume from superior to inferior. By doing table shifts and field size changes, we can treat that same volume and move this junction to various places. So that, in a nutshell, is how a junction shift works.